Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm your host JT, and if this is your first time tuning in, thank you and welcome. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you know every time we upload a new video. Hi guys, we are here at Splendidos in Beaver Creek, Colorado, and we are joined by the head chef here, Brian Ackerman. And thank you, Hello, everybody. <laughs> thank you, Brian, for being here. I'm so excited to have you on well, to share you. your story. My podcast channel and the YouTube channel are all about sharing stories, and uh, we all have one to share, and they all vary in, in our different adventures in our life. And I would love to hear a little bit about your journey of how you became a chef. Well, I grew up in St. Louis, Missouri, not the biggest uh, culinary capital in the world. I'm not, not the guy that worked in France and scrubbed pots and pans, you know. Went to the University of Missouri, um, tried to go to college in Cuba. My, my father is always mad at me as I, I think I dropped out with like six credit hours to go in college. <laughs> so, so, you know, that, that's a sore subject in the household, how I didn't graduate from University of Missouri. But uh, I was cooking my way through college, you know, just trying to make ends meet, make rent. And then uh, I was at probably one of the best restaurants in the college town, which awesome. was great. You know, just working the line, working. And then uh, one of the guys working was like, I'm going to culinary school in New York. And I'm like, basically, you know, I'm just like, where's New York at? You know, I haven't really left Missouri my entire life. Where's New York? And uh, so within a month, I packed my bags. You know, I've been cooking all through college, so I had a, a background in cooking, but not mm -hmm. anything major. You know what I mean? I had the basics. It's like going from Missouri to to a big city like that. Oh well, we we were in Hyde Park, Poughkeepsie. Okay. But you know, we worked in the city every weekend. We had Gosh. a chance to go down, Very cool. experience life, York, and exactly different opinions and different food, and things like that. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, really. The only other culinary things we had in St. Louis was Italian food. And then when you realize it's there's different types of Italian food, authentic, you know, there's a lot of variations, you know what I mean? <laughs> and at this point, did you see, obviously, going to culinary school? Oh, no, I, I was never a big picture guy. You know, I was just trying yeah. to do, get into the best restaurants I could, work the line, learn as much as I could. Never in a million years would I think I was going to be a chef or not a restaurant. Uh -huh. um, and then I uh, went there and then uh, got in with uh, probably one of the best restaurant, restaurants in Boston, uh, King Orange's Restaurant in Cleo. Yeah. And it was, it was a small restaurant and, you know, you could really learn how to do stuff and Very cool. really hands-on and open my eyes up to what's actually out there, exactly. you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, and then uh, worked some restaurants. And, and it all continued to grow from there. And so, from going from there to uh, now Colorado um, and being here in Colorado, I know that there was a few other stops along the way, I believe, right? Yeah, I was like, screw it. You know, I'm gonna go be a ski bump for a year. <laughs> you know, I had no idea I'd stay here. I had camping equipment in my car. You know, I was done to be, exactly. you know, watching Warren Miller videos. And <laughs> I'm gonna go ski and have fun, you know? I'm not gonna be stuck in a kitchen and and uh, do all those things. So I stopped in Frisco, and then I got a job in Vail, and then I got a job here. And where was your job in Vail? Sweet Basil. Okay. Yeah, they're great. Yeah, so those guys are amazing. Phenomenal Paul does an amazing job. Yeah, it, sure. It's just the, the quintessential Vail yes. restaurant. You have to go there every time. You come yes. To. And so you went from Sweet Basil, and then came. You came here, basically. Uh, and I was the, the salad boy. You know, I'm not much of a... Uh, I mean, my resume probably had some gum on it. It was it was, it was crumbled up. I, I mean, I didn't have a computer or anything, and I already had a job, so I didn't. I was like, here you go. Okay, I'll put them on salads. Uh, and uh, then within a couple weeks, I was the sous chef here. And just kind of worked my way up to this. And then this. from there, now you're the owner of the restaurant. and yep. uh, Kind of and, stumbled on that. And, uh, I, I had no idea that I was but, even going to attempt to be an owner. And But one thing is, is you know, you say you stumbled on that, but... It's really cool to see, you know, I think this happens in everyone's lives, but you look at going from, um, you know, 
going from from New York going out to San Francisco, and you choose to uh, you choose to stop here and you know do another passion of yours, which is skiing and enjoying that, and and then look at where it takes you and it takes yeah. you on a, a new adventure and ends up being you know a, a very successful and fun and uh, you know, some some hard hardships along the way I'm sure with it. it yes, could, uh, but a lot of fun in in living in this valley and being a part of this well, uh, amazing restaurant and community. Yeah, I mean, if you know this town, it's it's amazing. It's small. Everyone's together. Yeah. Beautiful wife and child. You know, we yeah. just this is where we we didn't think we'd end up here. We didn't think we'd stay, but you know, that's almost like the cliche in the mountains. You just you, you stay. And so now during COVID, we have you know have had our hardships, all of us with it, but especially restaurants. And yeah. and you um, have sort of taken on a new. Uh, not new, but a, 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 during this time, a new uh, philanthropy part and diving into doing a fundraiser. And, um, uh, and, and it seems like it's a, going to be a successful, fun, and amazing uh, event that is supporting other restaurants, not of course. Uh, around and, the community. And doing stuff like that is just really rewarding. Uh, you know, when, it, when COVID first hit, I thought I was going to be working at a grocery store. I thought, no way, no how, we'd still have a restaurant. Uh, fortunately, I had chefs like uh, Corey, uh, Corey Lansky, mm -hmm. he's, he's coming back for dinner, awesome. um, that really helped out. Uh, the first thing we tried to do was, of course, keep going. And we had all this food in the walk-in. If you don't have a restaurant, you don't understand how much food you have in the two busiest <laughs> weeks of the season. So we were pickling, and then, then uh, we just kind of looked at each other, and we're like, well, let's start cooking for the community market. So then we started doing 200 meals a week for that. You know, we've always done charities, but we never really, you yes. know, we're always like, yeah, we'll do that. You know, we do Run Up River Ranch, which great charity. We do Bright Future Foundation, great charity, but we've never really, we've always just been the one where somebody comes to us and we say, hey, you know yes. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Sure, we'll do it, we don't care. You know what I mean? Uh, we'll do our best, we love the charities, you know, that's, that's it. But, uh, but this summer, it's really opened our eyes. You know, we've been so fortunate. We have all the space in the world. This restaurant is gigantic. That we can get six feet. We can open these doors. So many people have been here this summer. So many people have been so generous. And so, with this new fun, with this fundraiser coming up, um, you have some other chefs that are coming to town, and some of those names we uh, we know. And would you? Mind oh yeah, yeah of course. Uh, join you. I don't know if you. So I I called up. So you know we watch what's going on around the world, and, and we've been fortunate up here. And uh, like I said, the restaurant's been, you know, normally the restaurant is half the size. So we've been able to spread it out because the chef has allowed us to. Um, so we've been fortunate enough to be doing similar numbers to what we've been doing. So, so you know, there's a lot of people that help me along the way. There's people that help everybody in their life, you know what I mean? Exactly. So, you know, we're like, let's do a dinner. And I called up Andrew Zimmerman. Famous chef, great guy, great cook, just just amazing human being, and just loves life and travels around the world and and does all that. And uh, I said, hey man, I'm thinking about doing a charity event, and he texts me back and says, I'm in. He said, I'm gonna get somebody way more famous than me. You know, he's a very humble guy. Uh, so he's got Dominic Crem coming, who is. The only female three-star Michelin chef in America, which she said yes and yes, or she actually said we and we, you know. <laughs> uh, and she's like, "Yeah, I'll be there, no problem. I'd love to help out." And then Bobby Stuckey, same thing. Just within minutes, he's from Frosca in Boulder. Uh, he's within seconds, he's in, and he got all the wine donated. And, uh, and so I was talking to you a little bit earlier. They're not shabby wines at all. Yes. Uh, so and then. Uh, and then we got Billy Deck, who I know from here, and huge restaurant tour uh, in Chicago and Nashville, and yeah, same thing. Within seconds, they're all like, "Sign, Sign me up! up. <laughs> Sign me up! I'm in." That's great. What, what can I do to help out? And uh, and same with around here. Uh, you know, we didn't really do much advertising, mm -hmm. and uh, in the beginning, they loosened restrictions. We were going to do 15, 50 uh, people, uh, as we have. You know, 
constraints. Yes. And now we're going to do another rib 50%. We have 150 already paid at a very hefty price tag. And everybody wants to donate more around the community. Uh, and I think it's done to really, really help out. That's awesome. Being an independent yeah. restaurant coalition. Well, so. that's great on your part and, and on the restaurant's part for being able oh. to put this together for so many other restaurants too that you're going to be helping out with this. And, and that's the idea. That this yeah. isn't for us. Uh, so 100% is going to charity. This is for getting that restaurant in San Francisco you love open up, getting that restaurant in New York open up that you love. This is getting. No one really helps us, if you notice. We're just like, <laughs> well, uh, um, I don't know if I'm supposed to say the redhead steps out in today's <laughs> world, but, but we get abused and beat up, you know what I mean? We're always the ones that, you know, uh, for example, if, a, if you're late for a doctor's appointment, they charge you like that. A credit card's not even disputed. But if you reserve a table and you take a credit card and they dispute it, you know what? They get their money back because we're a restaurant. We're not a doctor. You know, uh, we're always getting the short end of the stick. It seems like, especially in COVID times. Of course. Yeah. You know what I mean? Don't go there. Don't go there. You know. Well, everywhere else is open. Why are we the only ones that get picked out here? You know what I mean? And we're the safest. And you're sitting at a table with yourself. You, we're with your friends and family. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I think we're really. You can get me going all day on that one, but uh, but everyone's doing their best, and especially yes. restaurant workers. You know, everyone's always masked up. Everyone's washing their hands. You know, everyone's staying I mean, their distance. You mean here? Everyone's exactly very right. protective. Everyone's taking their, their the precautions that are necessary. Exactly, and exactly for them, exactly. and mainly for the customers because yeah, if we don't have customers. We don't. Exactly. Yeah. And if they don't let us open, <laughs> you know, there, there's a lot of even in this little restaurant. There's 40 guys, and that means 40 families that rely on that. There's also the companies that provide the food for us. I mean, it's, it's a big network of, a huge network of people a huge that people don't realize. It's yes, a, It's a huge impact on, you, on you know a I mean? community and a family and, and everyone, and, and especially you know, the restaurants and stuff. So. And, yeah, people don't realize that purveyors, they're like, oh, grocery stores are busy. Well, that's a completely different purveyor than what, than what we get at our. So I have fish guys that are just like going belly up. You yes. know what I mean? They're yeah. like, they're small mom and pop operations. You know, just because they're making really fancy food doesn't mean they're making a bunch of money. No one ever got in the restaurant business to make money. I don't think. <laughs> yeah. So, so Brian, what's the weirdest food that you have prepared? One of the first ones that really stuck out of my head was a live eel, and. Uh, I mean, so it was, it, we, got, go we, we got the intern, the live eel, and, and it was, he loved eel, he loved going to the sushi bars, we are in Boston, and all the fresh seafood and eating, because we'd work till midnight, and then we'd go out to the Chinese restaurant or the Japanese restaurant till 2, 3 in the morning, you know what I mean? Yes. And uh, so, so the chef, who was a bit eccentric, uh, got him a bag of live eels, right? I don't know if you've ever dealt with an eel. <laughs> one time, one time. I, and I don't like that. snakes. I don't <laughs> like any of that stuff. I'm like Indiana Jones, you know, like, get me away from the snake. I'm the so, same way. <laughs> so this thing is about this big. And he's like, you guys got to cook it up. And we're like, what the fuck are we going to do with this thing? <laughs> so so, so he, the chef comes over, he takes a nail, or actually a kitchen fork, and bangs its head in. And the eel just wraps around the guy's arm. Oh, it was the freakiest thing I've ever seen. And then we fillet it like a fish, and it's still flopping around without the sides of it. It's still a lot. And then, uh, I don't know if you put this. But, <laughs> but then we put, the, we put the fillets in the water, and the fillets started swimming in the water. And, and the dishwashers were freaking out. They were like, oh, the apple, oh, the apple. Like, they were about to walk out of the fucking restaurant. So, so that, I mean, that was... A, it's one of the funnier things that I've cooked, but I mean, strangest? I don't, I don't know. I mean, that was one that stuck in my head. Thank so, thank you so much, Brian, for sharing your story and, uh, and what you're doing for the community and other restaurants around here. And, uh, and it's, good. it's been great to uh, spend this time with you. So, thank you so much. Thank you, JT. And, uh, you know, it, 
the, the recent charity dinner is also the idea to get other restaurants to do the same thing. Exactly. Um, maybe they will. Maybe they won't. But we always seem to be just fighting each other, so why don't we work together? Work together. But uh, well, cheers. Cheers. Thanks, bud. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>